At 494 base cards, the 1958 top set is somewhat of a beast to assemble. Loaded with Hall of Famers, stars of the day, and of course the Roger Maris rookie, it was by far the most extensive set the company had released up to that point. Then take into account an extra 41 cards, which include yellow name and team variations, team cards with differences on their back checklists, and a card that still sparks controversy over whether or not it should be designated as a variation, and you have quite the project. Since there are no 1957s to speak of in my collection, it's worth noting that Topps had changed the physical size of their cards that year to what is known as the standard of 2.5 inches by 3.5 inches, and has not changed since. This now allows cards to be displayed in nine pocket pages, and the vertical layout makes the cards much more presentable. I honestly can't remember the origins of starting this set, but I do know that it took quite a while to assemble. Looking through it recently, the design still possesses a type of magic that allows each player's portrait to pop off its pastel color background. This set is historic in that for the first time, Topps created all-star cards in conjunction with Sport Magazine. Also for the first time, checklists were made available as part of the base set, grouped by team, with a photo of each club on the front. The previous two years, checklists were unnumbered and for a time not considered part of the sets or set pricing. This is the first Topps issue that includes Stan Musial, though he only made an appearance as an all-star in the final series. The set is numbered up to 495, as number 145 was not issued. During the winter of 1958, Ed Boucher, the rumored recipient of that spot, was given a season-long suspension, though he was reinstated in July of that year. 33 cards from numbers 2 to 108 have a variation of either the player's name or team name in yellow print as opposed to white. Tougher names to find well-centered and in EX or better condition are the Bob Clemente and Al Kaline. I found this Hank Aaron at a card show for a decent price, and as someone once noted, when you see a 58 yellow in any condition, scoop it up. Makes sense. I'm down to just 8 yellows needed and have a beat on a decent Clemente. The centering is off left to right, but the edges and corners look really nice. I'll give you an update if I scoop that one up. Four team cards found towards the end of the run have been discovered with the player's checklist listed alphabetically, like all the other teams, and also in numerical order. Braves, Tigers, Orioles and Reds teams with numerical listings are very tough to find in solid condition and run a pretty penny. Still waiting on the Tigers card here. Quick fact, Giants and Dodgers team cars did not print their city, although the franchises had already moved across the country from New York to California. Another variation, actually two, is found on card number 13, Billy Heft. He comes in three versions. First is the basic with his name in white lettering, the yellow letter version, which is part of the group we discussed earlier, and a white letter version with a yellow triangle colored in on the bottom near his shoe. The basic version has a red triangle that is part of the keyed out background. A couple of gaffes that were not fixed, Mike McCormick's card 37 shows a photo of Ray Monzant, and Milt Bowling's card number 188 actually is Lou Berberet. Now to the card that sparks lively debate around the hobby. Pancho Herrera card number 433, Here's the base card. Simple enough, there's his picture, name, and team. There are examples of the card with the A in his last name faded, as if Topps tried to correct a spelling error and failed in erasing it completely. I personally have not seen a card with the letter completely gone, though others say it exists. Was this a non-error that was caught during production and stopped partway through? Is it just a simple case of running out of ink? No matter the reason, the card goes for big bucks, especially in graded form. It's too rich for my blood, so I'll just chalk it up as one that will not be part of my collection. That means my master set will never be at 100% complete, but that's just the way it goes. If you're a super duper collector and feel that any Topps branded item from one particular year needs to be attained, then be aware that the company inserted bazooka contest and felt emblem giveaway cards in random packs. Just some more goodies to chase in case you thought you were done. I have some work to do on this set. Besides the 8 yellows and the Tigers team variations, there are 20 cards I'm looking to upgrade. There are no major stars needed, but centered and free of ink on the backs would do nicely. Thanks again for continuing on this journey with me. Check out future videos which will update my progress in finishing this and other vintage sets. 
In the next video, we'll talk about a personal historic mark in my collection as we go through the 1959 top set. Thank you.